Hey, I'm Kieran Ounsorn, and today we're talking about the rising cost of food. I'm sure it's something that you're aware of, but it's also something that we've covered extensively on this show. We're asking people, what are your experiences in the grocery store in terms of like food prices? What have you noticed so far? I've noticed that everything has gone up in price. So I said to them, like, why? Oh, it's just, that's what it is. As simple as sparkling water has gone up at least 50%. Proteins are up. So if you buy a piece of fish, it's a lot more than it was. So often when we think about the impact of rising food prices, we're thinking about it in the context of our own personal grocery bills, the cost to put food on a family's table. And more and more people are impacted, more parents and more children. And it's rippling out into society as well. There's food banks, the rising costs are affecting them, and breakfast programs for schools, that affects them as well. And that's why we're here today at Lord Dufferin Public School here in Toronto. They're one of the schools in this city that provides food, nutritious food, for children every single day of the week. So we're gonna go inside. Okay, first thing in the morning, we get um, come in. We get the breakfast ready, um, get the fruits. Yeah, yeah. We get it ready for the kids to come in, and then I start making everything. And then I start with the grills over here. Today's Wednesday, pancakes, yeah. yeah. All right. Strawberry, yep. blueberry. Brilliant. Bananas. All the different fruits. Yeah. So folks like Jackie here are here from 7 a.m. onwards every single day, Monday through Friday, making food for 25 to 30 children. I'm curious, do you guys have a favorite meal? Uh, probably the pancakes. Yeah, the pancakes. The pancakes yeah. are really good. I like the waffles. My favorite is the, um, the bagel with the, with the eggs and cheese on top. How does it make you feel during the day, like that you've had a meal at the start? Um, it was energized. Like energized. Yeah, energized. Especially because like our classes are like, like very active in the morning. So, like, what are the reasons why you want to come to this program? They're serving food, might as well eat, yeah, yeah. so you can get through like the morning until lunch and stuff like that, because you don't want to go through the morning starving. Like, my parents have been running low on money, and the prices are just like really high, and my parents are just telling me, here, have 25 cents to go eat uh, breakfast at school. Yeah, we've definitely seen an increase yeah. in the last year uh, since we've reopened yeah. uh, after the pandemic had a shutdown, uh, just because of the food prices across the city. You can see how many kids um, eat the breakfast and then our hot lunch, it's, it's the entire school is eating the hot lunch and she makes this every single day. Yeah. Um, it's the entire school having the morning meal, like yeah. the, the different food groups. So school nutrition programs here in the city are saying that it's getting more difficult to make sure they're serving all the kids because the number of children that are required acquiring food is rising. More than ever, there's a need. Inflation is up, and according to Student Nutrition Ontario, that's having an effect on families. More than a quarter of the student population has signed up for the school's breakfast program, 80 out of 300. That's more than double since before the pandemic. Rising food costs and inflation are stretching family budgets. It's stretching our program budget. We have the highest nutrition budget that we've had in the 30 plus year history of the program. I have principals call us, parents call We need to start a lunch program. We need an after school program. Our kids are hungry. Can we have some food cards? And we keep having to say to them, I'm sorry. There's no money. So the Breakfast Club of Canada is a national organization that services 600,000 students in 3,500 schools across the country. And before the pandemic, they were saying that something between 30 and 40 percent of students in those schools relied on these types of food programs. But since the pandemic, those numbers have nearly doubled. But now it's up to 60 to 75 percent of students that are requiring that. And there isn't some kind of food ferry to pay for these programs. So with so many kids relying on these programs, the question is, what happens if they run out of cash? So Lord Dufferin is one of 600 schools here in Toronto that provide this type of breakfast program. And how they get their funding is through a number of different sources. 
Now, the Toronto Foundation for Student Success is the overarching organization, and in their most recent report, they showed that 84% of their funding comes from grants, with another 15% coming from donations and fundraising, and only 1% coming from other sources. Now, what do they do with that money? Well, they buy their food, they pay for transportation, their equipment, and also their administrative costs. And the people who are running these programs, they're saying that it's getting more difficult to make sure that they're getting the food to students. Now, how do we decide how much money goes to each program? It's all by formula. Uh, we take the number of children that are, uh, the schools that are applying, the, num the kind of meal, uh, that they're serving, whether it's a breakfast or a snack or a morning meal, how many days a week they're going to serve it, um, and, and, it and they get a proportion, an equal proportion for, for every school. So let's break down what these meals cost and what they're made up of. A typical meal will have protein, fruits, and vegetable, and some whole grains. And the program that runs in this school, they say that costs them about $1.18 per meal to deliver or at least that's what it did cost them prior to the pandemic. But those numbers have shot up since then. Post-pandemic, it now costs them between $1.70 and $2 to deliver that same meal. And with more and more students requiring these meals, it's putting the program in a really tight bind where they're having to decide, do they offer less food or service fewer students? Kids that are hungry don't seem to concentrate very well and they really need food. So in British Columbia, the provincial government actually chose to increase their funding for school food programs like this to the tune of $214 million. This is the largest investment in school food program in the province's history. Elsewhere across Canada, it's been a lot more of a patchwork. And in provinces like Ontario, the funding hasn't been increased in almost a decade. We're seeing programs that have to make serious compromises. Um, maybe they can't serve milk or, or yogurt. Maybe they can't operate every day. We're hearing from members of our coalition across the country that they really think they will uh, maybe have to stop serving kids uh, earlier, like in May instead of June. So the aim of these programs is to make sure that students have food in their bellies so they can stay focused in school and to help reduce food insecurity amongst children. And Toronto Public Health, it says that this has a positive impact not only on their physical health, but their mental health as well. And there's more research that shows that it not only actually has a positive impact on people actually showing up for school, but also on academic success. We know that students across um, the socioeconomic spectrum struggle to eat the number of serving of fruits and vegetables every day. Um, so the benefits of being able to teach students about um, food and how to prepare food healthily um, has major ramifications uh, for, for teaching students. So when we're thinking about solutions and wanting to make sure that these programs don't close down, the experts that we've talked to have said that this is a national problem and that it requires solutions from the federal government. Among G7 countries, Canada is the only one without a universal school food program. In Brazil, for example, the national program there feeds 47 million students at 190,000 schools each day. For since 2019, the federal government has been, um, you know, promising or has been thinking about a national school food program. So this could be something that if federal funding was infused, um, some of these challenges could really be alleviated. Karina Gould is the Minister of Children, Families and Social Development and she says the federal government is working on a program like this. She says they've reached out to stakeholders, as many as 5,000 of them, but it's still not clear how or when money actually is going to show up. There had been hopes that this recent federal budget would have money in it, but that didn't end up happening. And so while the program here at Lord Dufferin is going to continue for now, there is a cloud of uncertainty that is weighing on staff and students alike. What does that make you think? Like, how do you feel when you hear that maybe people after you, students coming up, won't be able to have access to the same sort of thing? Well, um, it kind of makes me feel sad because that's not fair to them. They might be starving and it might impact them to start the day. They might be grumpy or sad, moody and stuff like that. So yeah, it's kind of not fair to them. We hope they'll honor the promise to invest in a national school food program because if they do, that could be as much as a dollar a day. This problem could be solved and it could be solved quickly, but it needs to be done now. These kids can't wait. What a great day.